it's an interesting time to be uh, talking about saving energy, really. Um, I don't know whether you've, you've picked up on a lot of the stuff in the news about the environment and global warming um, over the last, maybe the last week or so. Mm -hmm. um, quite a lot of um, environmental skepticism, people who are challenging some of the scientists that, um, that measure global warming. Um, so it's, it, it, it's a time when I think it's even more important for us to be really clear on what we're saying. Um, I was talking to Graham earlier, and, and I don't think um, you need to convince people about climate change, that's not your job, but you might occasionally get asked things like that. Um, I think your job is to be really clear, um, to give people evidence um, that this is a really sensible, positive thing to do. Um, not use any jargon um, and relate it to their own experience. So be really clear what they're going to get out of it by doing it. And don't assume just because they've picked up the phone that they know all of those things um, because people don't really operate that way. So at a time of um, your uh, environmental scepticism um, and sometimes confusion about the whole thing about climate change and what it's really really about that's why I put this little cartoon up at the back um, your job is just to, to be very clear, be positive be encouraging but to, to give people the to think um, about something that's gone particularly well for you over the last week say um, if you can't think back that far, maybe yesterday, um, a call in the middle in the middle of all the calls you've you've, you've taken that you think you've either dealt with um, pretty well or you just enjoyed. Now, if you can't come up with one, that's fine. But have a think about it. So something in the last week where you thought at the end of it, well, actually, I, I, I dealt with that quite well. That went rather well. Or that was fun. Um, I don't expect them. there's lots of them that are fun because, like you say, it's quite repetitive at the moment. So, anybody like to have a go first? I'm looking at Graham. Just because, because Graham and I have spoken to each other already before we before we came into the room because we found we had a mutual acquaintance. Um. Well, uh, just um, perhaps a couple of calls in the last couple of days. Where those ones where you sense that they're up for listening and they're not... The problem with this scrappage scheme is that so many people are just after that pot at the end of the rainbow and they really... You can, he you can hear them not listening <laughs> to anything else you're trying to introduce because it's like, mm, yeah, mm. And they're not just don't want to know but when you get somebody and you then there was somebody about um i got him onto renewables yesterday right. and we went through various bits of renewables and stuff and so i suggested you know because i'll send you the information but i said look you know this this um uh, this tariff feed-in thing is going to be i mean just think about it i said you know you're, you're talking about an air source um generator if you had a, a pv uh, panel on your roof, you could actually end up uh, not only um, producing enough electricity to pay for the, your air source heat pump, but also making a little bit of money <coughs> by feeding the extra. But you know, just I don't know, just took him off on a journey like that, and I thought, well, and he really, it was really grateful just to have had a few ideas thrown at him. And there have been a couple like that just recently, sure, so yeah. they've stood out a bit. You know. I felt that actually, because <coughs> you, you notice them when everything is about the same things. So when anything that is like kind of a bit different, or they or they want to listen, like you say, is like so you, it really stands out. So you're like, oh yeah, all right, then I'll tell you about that <laughs> straight away. And uh, there was one that I don't usually take calls that are longer than sort of ten minutes. It's usually dealt with, especially lately, <coughs> uh, a lot sooner than no later than ten minutes. But there was one that did actually last for about. 22, three minutes or something, but it was all useful stuff. Um, and she was really sharp and wanted to listen. And it was um, talking about loads of stuff, like insulation, went through all the details of that. And back and forth on a, a few things, but she was just 
verifying things and making sure that something was right and just checking that the what she heard things right. So it was really yeah. good. So I yeah. knew that she had exactly the right information, and uh, it was really satisfying. It was about sort of post five o'clock, so it was kind of felt you know because it was a bit quieter, a bit more relaxed as well, and that was one that stood out. And uh, I've been making notes of my good calls on the back of my uh, my pad. So that was a good one. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have. No, yeah. but I, like the, I like the ones that are, are, are kind of a switch over call. Right. Where you've got a person over on the other day. They've come right. through and they're not eligible for the scrappy scheme. Right. Because their board is not G rated. Okay. But then you're able to actually try and find something else that they're eligible for. And they are so grateful once you actually do find them something different that they forget that it's taken a bit of time to look for it. Yeah. It's when you're actually taking the call and it's taking time, and at the end of the call, there's nothing, there's 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 no benefit for them. Yeah. That they can see, you can see a benefit, but yeah. they can't. Uh, if if they can see something, no matter how small, they're grateful. Yeah. If there's nothing for them, they think mm, it's a waste of time. Yeah. I've actually had someone say that was a waste of time, as they're putting the phone down to their wife. Well, that's a waste of time. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll come back to that. I'm going to say a little bit about um, the principles behind the call guidance that we give you. Um, you are familiar with the sorts of things that we are looking for, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, fairly self-evident. Um, callers know who they're talking to. The advisor know who they're talking to caller can be contacted again, you give accurate and appropriate advice, um, you act as an advocate for further action, and like I said, in some cases it's the first step on a journey. So if you, if you pick up that people are not interested in talking about anything else other than the thing that they've rung about, you can still flag up that they can come back to you in the future for further advice about saving energy. So if you feel that, that, like you said, the caller isn't really listening, they just want their question answered, it's still something you can flag up. We're, we're asking you to have two very different sets of skills. Um, and I think that's one way in which this work differs from maybe other call centres that some of you might have worked in. The first set you'll be much, you'll be very familiar with, and I think having listened into your calls, you're generally very good at all of that, and that's the call handling skills. Because you've all, from your backgrounds, had lots of experience of communication, um, of dealing, um, getting getting information in, giving information out. So capturing contact details, you know, smoothly covering things like d data protection, you know. You know don't, we don't keep your details, we don't pass your, pass your details on, is it okay if we send you things out? You seem very comfortable with all of that. Um, speaking at an appropriate speed, fairly obvious, but I think... It doesn't always work, does it? It doesn't always happen. <laughs> and um, and uh, just to remember, if you speak more quickly, it doesn't mean you get more information in. Yeah. If you don't... <laughs> you got, you got yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just... People just close down if you talk yeah. too fast. Um, not using jargon, um, uh, so or acronyms, always really important. Um, and, that, and the last one, um, making sure the customer clearly understands the advice. And I think the obvious way of doing that is just checking, asking mm. questions. Is that clear? You know, do you, do you understand what you've got to do now? Um, so I think in general, all of you are pretty competent uh, at all of those things. Uh, occasionally things don't go well, but I think generally are good. But the other side of what we want you to do um, is less about giving the customer what they want, which is what we've been talking about up until now. So they want an answer to their question. They want you to find a solution. They're still important, and that's why you use your core handling skills. But we're, we're asking you um, to use really good customer engagement skills. 